welcome along to this special series on the virtual vicar where we go through the best bits of the bible and talk about them let us know what you think in the comment section below we'd love to hear from you my name is peter cooper the virtual vicar and with me is king james so it's cool because he's a great fan of the king james version this is acts chapter 9 beginning to read at verse 1 and saul yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the lord went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to damascus to the synagogues that if he found any of this way whether they were men or women bring them bound unto jerusalem and as he journeyed he came near damascus and suddenly there shined round him a light from heaven and he fell to the earth and he heard a voice saying unto him saul saul why persecutest thou me and he said who art thou lord and the lord said i am jesus whom thou persecutest, it's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Saul, who changed his name to Paul later, really because of this incident, was going out to get the people who followed the way, when it says this way, any of this way in verse 2 it's talking about people that we now call christians but they didn't have that name yet so there were people who were following the way of the messiah jesus uh, who uh, was the christ another name for messiah so uh, this in itself calling him the christ or the messiah meaning is the chosen one of god was heresy to saul and he was going out there as a sort of a representative of a pressure group uh, within Israel to go and bring these people and drag them back to Jerusalem to, I guess, to suffer for their crimes as he saw it. So that's the situation. What, what, do you, what would you say, King James? What, um, what's the key thing that happened here? There's always a moment in time in people's lives when something changes. If you think about the light from heaven, This uh, basically this uh, moment where people start to have an opportunity to see really what reality is about. And when you think about Saul as he was, wasn't perhaps um, somebody who was doing things in a way that um, you would want an individual to do. And, And it's interesting, isn't it, that as we go through our lives, that people follow the wrong path. They do things which uh, they get distracted. They are perhaps in some ways lured by things which are easy gains and not always uh, by good means. This idea that you are on a road uh, to the bad path or the road to the good path, the light helps Saul to actually start to see the the truth in terms of what God wants uh, people to do. It's a moment, some people might say, that is essentially a a turn point, a sliding doors moment in lay terms. Mm -hmm. And I think that this is probably, in my opinion, one of the most important points about what the Bible is saying to people, which is you have to learn. You're given an opportunity to see what you need to do, to see the light and the path to go to, which is the righteous path about what you need to do in your life to make a difference. If you're going down a path of darkness, meaning that, say, for example, you're you're causing corruption or you're doing things wrong, then you're not really being ethical, you're not you've got lack of integrity, you are going down a dark path. But in this particular case, what I think is important, it was an opportunity for an individual to change. He was given an opportunity to see the light and see a path which is more of a righteous path. And that was key because that's where he decided to to pursue that path. Mm -hmm. Now, there was a challenge. What did it all mean? And often when people see the light, it's a shock, isn't it? When you actually recognize that the things that you've been doing in your life are all completely wrong. And I think many people can relate to that. Some people choose to just carry on. They just dismiss it, thinking they can get away with it. But actually, you're not going to get away with it, are you? And uh, I think this is true of many, many people. I mean, that he believed he was doing the right thing. Uh, We, looking back at it, say, well, no, no, he needed to change. But to him, he was being he was one of the good guys, you know, going uh, out to try and find these people. And that's true of virtually everyone, even when they're doing terrible things, that we believe ourselves to be in the right. And it takes something like this. It's an intervention, isn't it? coming and the light 
coming from heaven. What was it physically? What was it ball lightnings, a particular type of lightning, or uh, was it something else entirely? Was it something that uh, he and the other people saw, like a sort of vision? Or, uh, it sounds like it's describing something physical, but what, it doesn't matter. Whatever it was, uh, it was God intervening to in order for him to change. But what was important was for him to recognize what he needed to do in his behavior and his attitude and his belief. I think that many people can relate to this if they try and apply it to their everyday lives. What I would encourage people to do is to read the rest of the of the passage, because yes. then it helps to complete the um, the picture. We want to hear from you and we'll continue the conversation in the next part of this series where we pick out the best bits of the Bible. Catch you next time.